what's going on everyone greetings greetings good people out there in social media land this is dr marcy here timing in from alaska um i just wanted to talk to you guys i had a um i did a group today with some clients and i wanted to share that message with you so come on in grab a seat in our virtual lounge um put on your pajamas if you want to grab some hot cocoa maybe um dr marcy your life your favorite life change architect and i wanted to share with you all a challenge that i gave to my group today um so for those of you who don't know what i do up in alaska i'm doing some sud counseling um, and some consulting with a treatment facility up here. And when I tell you that for all the struggles and the cold and all of the things that come along with uh, traveling from Texas to Alaska and flight delays and the whole nine yards, there's literally nothing more rewarding than the work that I do with the patients, um, both virtually and in person. And so today I had the good fortune to actually, since I'm up here, be with my group in person instead of doing it virtual. And um, I asked them, I gave them a journaling exercise and I asked them some questions um, in there. Primarily I asked them three questions because I really wanted to measure how they were feeling about their progress and their recovery. And so the three questions that I asked them was, um, what did you hope to get out of treatment? Um, the second one was, are you getting what you hoped for? And the third question was, um, what do you need to be successful? And, you know, I always share with people that for as much as I pour into the clients, the patients, whatever, um, I get so much back out of it. And Today was one of those days. We have um, a couple clients who are getting ready to graduate treatment. Um, they've successfully completed their program. They found housing, the whole nine yards. And that's one of the things that I love about the company that I work with up here is it's one of the few treatment facilities that doesn't put a time constraint on their recovery. And so I always, I tell patients and I tell, you know, applicants when we're talking about hiring new employees, um, that this is one of the few places that takes individuals from the streets to stability. Uh, meaning that, you know, people can enter the program completely homeless, years and years and years of addiction. Uh, and when they go into treatment, they go into treatment to get better, to recover from their addiction and get their the life skills that they need and to be able to truly make sustainable long-term changes in their lives. And so, um, in the group today, like I said, I asked them, I posed them these three questions. Um, and the first one being, what did you hope to get? And I think that this lesson, the reason I'm sharing it with you guys is because I think that this lesson is good for all of us, or this exercise is good for all of us to go through. When we find ourselves in certain situations or we're trying to make changes in our lives or we want to, you know, go after a new career or whatever the case may be, you know, even if you're walking into a meeting, you know, that was one of the things that I learned in corporate America, know what you want out of the meeting before you walk through the door into the meeting, right? And so I asked them, what did you hope to get from coming to treatment? And one of the individuals um, who's getting ready to graduate, he said, you know, that he had gotten way more than he ever had hoped for in all honesty. Um, but he said the thing that he needed the most that he didn't even understand that he needed when he came into it was time. And I thought that was really interesting because we tend to take advantage or take time for granted. Like it's, oh, well, there's always tomorrow to start. There's always tomorrow to do this. We can do this later. And so, especially if you're a procrastinator, you know, time is, I'll do it later type of thing. And he said that what he needed the most was time. And so when I asked him to expand on his answer he shared that he needed he'd been to you know other treatment programs in the past and had ended up relapsing and he said what i needed the most was time time to 
learn how to cope with my past, time to learn how to process emotions, time to learn how to grieve, time to uh, learn how to um, how to operate in a sober in a sober lifestyle. And I think you know sometimes we we underestimate what it takes for individuals to make major changes in their lives when they've gone their whole life in a certain way or in a certain environment and uh, a, a number of treatment programs and I'm, I, I'm not throwing any shade I'm just simply saying that a number of programs and even if we're not talking about in the context of treatment um, a lot of programs give you a time frame so oh, you're in this program for 90 days and I'll use weight loss for me. You know, everybody wants these, you know, quick instant results. And what we always talk about in the substance abuse groups is that, you know, you're trying to fix something that's been out of out of whack for 20 years, 30 years, 15 years. And to think that you're going to walk into any place and, completely erase 30 years of lifestyle, 30 years of habits, 30 years of behaviors in 30, 60 or 90 days is just insane. It's asinine. It's an unrealistic expectation and it puts a lot of pressure on you. And then when you inadvertently relapse, then you're kicking yourself in the behind and you're, you know, feeling like, oh, I'm a failure on this, on that. Um, hey, Dr. James, you know, and it's not necessarily about that. You didn't have the time and we underestimate the value of time, giving yourself time to heal, time to recover, time to process. Um, we had a couple different individuals that talked about the value of, you know, just learning how to process grief. You know, nobody gives us lessons in grief and we mourn the loss of a lot of things. We even mourn the loss. We were talking today. We mourn the loss sometimes about things that uh, we're not even good for us to begin with, you know, but in certain instances, all times aren't bad times. You know, for me, domestic violence, the relationship that I was in that ended um, abruptly and abusively with me being attacked, um, you know, I, I would look back at that relationship even and say, you know, all times weren't bad times. But in order to get past that and not be tempted to fall back into a pattern of behavior with that individual, I needed time. I needed time away. I needed time to process. I needed time to figure out what does life look like now without that person in my life. And for my clients who are dealing with substance abuse, it's the same thing. What does my life look like without drugs? What does it look like without alcohol? Um, and so I wanted to share that, that thought. And when I asked him, I said, so when you talk about needing the time, what were you doing with time before? And he said that one of the things that he had to um, really learn how to get past and, you know, one of the things was his regrets. And I said, well, what kinds of things did you regret? And he said he regretted how much time he had spent in addiction, how much time he had um you know, lost how much time he had missed with people he care about. Um, and so he really talked a lot about the influence and the impact of misused time or not having enough time uh, to be able to truly make the changes that he needs to make. And uh, we also talked about mindset. So like if you go into something and you you if you have in your mind, oh, you know, I'm going to try this for 14 days or I'm going to try this for 30 days and you get in there and that stays your mindset. If you don't shift that mindset to I'm going to be here as long as it takes, I'm going to stick with this as long as it takes, I'm going to keep doing what I need to do for as long as it takes. And instead, you're still saying, I'm going to do this for 14 days, I'm going to do this for six months, um, then you're going to fail you are absolutely going to fail. You're not going to be able to make long-term changes because you've not made a long-term commitment. And so that time factor and that mindset of, I'm going to do this until I get out of it what I need. 
And so when I asked the patients, I said, I, you know, I asked them, what did you hope to get? And then I asked them, are you getting what you hoped for? And almost across the board, they all said, I'm getting more than I hoped for. Because see, their expectations were so small because they had failed so many times. And, you know, again, I'm talking about a substance abuse group that I taught today, but this is for anything. We can apply this across the board to relationships and all sorts of stuff. You know, we have these really small expectations and even with kids, like raising our kids, kids will either raise up or drop down to the level of the expectation. And so if you enter into a life change with a very low expectation or you don't expect yourself to be successful, you don't be truly believe that you can be successful, you won't be. 100% you won't be. You have to shift that mindset to the, I'm going to do this to what, as long as it takes. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to be in this for the long haul. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm not, I'm going to be relentless after this. Um, and so again, like I just, I learned so much from, from them because, and I watched them interact with each other and provide encouragement to one another and share um, advice and things like that. But then we also talked about, um, again, it becomes a time factor. If I think I'm only going to do something for 14 days, or I think I'm only going to do something for 30 days, and now you're telling me, mm, this is going to take you six months. It's going to take you a year. But in your mind, the amount of time that you had allotted for that was 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever. What's the likelihood you're going to stick with it? Pretty slim. You know, and I just, I was so proud of them that they have this awareness about what their experience is because several of them have um, relapsed multiple times. And, you know, for them, we talk about relapse. For the rest of us, we talk about failed or we didn't meet our goal or, you know, I quit, I gave up, I didn't. It's all the same thing. It's just, for something different you know your goal was different but at the end of the day the goal wasn't accomplished and for a lot of us it's because we don't give ourselves enough time we don't give ourselves enough time to get the tools that we need we don't give ourselves enough time to learn how to use the tools once we have them we don't give ourselves enough time to practice using the tools and you know here in treatment i tell my clients all the time practice while you're in the bubble practice while you're in the bubble you know, outside of treatment, I tell my clients, practice when it doesn't really matter. So whatever that skill is, practice it when there's nothing on the line. Because when you're pressed and you feel under pressure, it's much harder to stand the line and, and defend your boundaries and support the changes that you say you want to make if you haven't been practicing. You need it to come to you like boom, boom, boom. It needs to be muscle memory. It needs to be habitual. Like, no, this is what I do in this situation. And so, you know, we talked about that with the group today. And I asked them, I said, so the third question that I asked them. So the first question was, what do you hope to get out of the program? The second one um, is, uh, are you getting what you hope for? And then the third one was, what do you need to be successful? And inadvertent, you know, invariably, all of them agreed like I, I feel like I'm getting what I need to be successful and every single one of them even though they said it in different ways it all came back to having the time having the time to get on your feet having the time to get some stability under you to get some money saved up to be able to you know, go out into the world, learn how to re-engage in society in with the sober lifestyle, you know, that's a tall order, you know, again, I talked about, for me, I talk about weight loss all the time. So, you know, that's for me, like going into a pizza restaurant and ordering a salad, like that's not going to come naturally to me. I, I, pizza's like a whole food group, in my opinion, like it, it should like should replace like vegetables or something. <laughs> so for me to want to naturally want to do that, no, I've got to be conditioned to make those changes. I got to be conditioned 
to want that change. I got to be willing to stay the course for as long as it takes. It's not going to be a quick fix. And that's how we have to apply anything. Whether you're going back to school to get your degree, let's say you, you know, you think you're going to go to school. It's going to take you two years to, to finish up whatever this degree is. You got X many credits left to get and you get in the process. Life starts lifing. Life starts happening while you're making all these other plans. And you realize like, you know what, I'm going to have to take some time off. I'm going to, it's, I'm not going to be able to get this done in two years. Well, then what happens? Do you stay the course? Do you stick it out? Do you, do you invest that additional time that you're going to need? Time changes everything. Time a hundred percent changes everything. And my mentor always talks about, you know, we're equal in time, but separated by how we invest it. And that's absolutely true. But you also have to know why you're investing it. What's what's really driving, what's really the driving force? Because sometimes it's not even the thing that you think it is. So when my clients were talking about what did you, you know, what are you, what you hope to get out of it? And then they would start telling me, what they have actually gotten out of it, right? So the the young man who said he needed time, he um, this was his I don't know second or third time in treatment. He had relapsed before. He had a lot of regrets, a lot of guilt about it. Um, but then he started talking about all of the things that have changed because he allotted himself that time. So now he's he's went while he was in treatment. He got his GED. He's gotten an apartment. He has money saved up. He's working on getting custody, you know, of his kid. You know, all of these wonderful things. Um, he's repairing relationships that, you know, had been lost through his addiction. All of these things that even if he'd gotten sober without investing that extra time, those things wouldn't have happened. He could have gotten sober and not gotten his GED. He could have gotten sober and not repaired those relationships. He could have gotten sober and not learned how to process grief and disappointment and things like that. And then when he faces those things again, he's likely to end up relapsing. But because he's invested the time on the front, he's front loaded it. Hey, Miss Marcia. Hey, Barry. Um, because he's front loaded it and he's, he committed to, I'm going to stick this out. There's another young lady. That's what she said. She's like, the first time I came in my mind, I'm here for 90 days In 90 days. I'm going to be, I'm out good, bad, or otherwise. So, you know, you get clean, you start feeling pretty good. You lose 10 pounds, you start feeling pretty good. You fit in that dress like you hadn't been able to fit into in, in a long, long time. Oh, well, I can do this. I could do that. I'm healed. I'm cured. I'm ready. But you never allotted yourself the one thing that you needed the most. And that was time to firm up that foundation. Time to clean up old stuff. Dig up the old baggage. Get rid of it. So that's my message for you guys today. Ask yourself those three questions. If you have something that you're trying to accomplish, you have some big changes you want to make in your life. Or you just have some difficult changes. Maybe they're not even big, but they're just hard. Uh, ask yourself those questions. Ask yourself, you know, what do I hope to get? And be honest. One of the things we talked about today, too, was rigorous honesty. Are you rigorous with your honesty, with yourself especially? Forget the rest of the world. Are you rigorously honest with yourself? about what you really, really need and what you really hope to get out of it. So what do you hope to get out of it? Um, midway through, check yourself. Am I getting what I hope for? Is this working out? Is this working out how, how I planned? And if you're off track, you don't feel like you're on the, on the way to getting what you needed or to accomplishing the goal, make some adjustments. Make some adjustments midstream. You don't have to stay on the same course. You have to stay the course, meaning you got to stay focused on the goal, but there's different ways of going about it. You just got to give yourself the time 
to figure that out. And if you rush through process, you rush through trying to make changes, you're not going to give yourself that time that you need. And then the final question is, what else do you need to be successful? There's some things that's going to help you right out the gate. You're going to be making really good progress. You're going to feel like you're on track. And then you're going to get closer and closer and closer to your goal. And you still have to ask yourself, what else do I need? What else do I need to be successful? What else? How much more time do I need to invest and how do I need to invest it in order to get the result that I want to get? Okay. So that's my, that's my share for today. Um, again, I walked out of group today. I felt so pumped up. I'm so happy um, that we have individuals ready to graduate treatment. Uh, here in the next week or two, we have one graduating this week, another one, I think, in the next um, two weeks. So, uh, you know, again, find something that motivates you and inspires you. Um, my people here, uh, my, my patients here do that. My clients uh, back home do that for me. Uh, seeing them succeed is what encourages me to put in the time to do the things that I need to do. So... I hope everyone has an amazing day. We are in for a huge cold snap here in Alaska tomorrow. So I am gearing up for that. And um, I will check back in with you guys and I'll update you on some more when uh, I have some more exciting news to share. So in the meantime and in between time, have an amazing night and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.